You're listening to a Galactic Network podcast. The Podcast of Terror is a show with adult themes run by adults for adults. Please do not have your children listen to this show. It might be beneficial to them in the long run, but please, please wait until they are older. This is one of those things. It's like when you laugh when you're playing bingo and, and 069 comes up and you have a chuckle and your mom, your kitty says, uh, uh, Mommy, Mommy, why, why are you laughing at 069? And the mommy says, uh, when you're older. It's one of those kinds of things. Mommy, Mommy, can I listen to Podcast of Terror? Sure. When you're older. This is a show with adult themes and some childish behavior. A lot of dick jokes. Uh, so please, please, please. Uh, If you want to avoid the swearing, if you want to avoid spoilers for your favorite horror movies, and if you want to avoid really, really lame, petty dick jokes, do not listen to this show. It is not for you. Corey, how often do you wear a shirt? Not as often as you would think. Yeah, it's always nice to cover up your nipples, and maybe your neighbors are complaining because they're hairy. I know you wear wear shirts when we do these shows. That's about it, from what I understand. It's more that I just give off a glare that blinds drivers by. It is hot in California, so I assume that you sweat. There's a there's a slight sheen to you, and the California sun just. Pshh, I don't even sheen. I estevez. <laughs> that that is, if you do not want to estevez in public, we have two places in which you can go. We got two coupon codes to make your life a little cheaper. Uh, you can go visit uh, frequent guest and friend of the show Matt Vincent. His his website thehate.com. That's the. H-V-I-I-I.com. Use the coupon code HBG15 for 15% off your order. Maybe you hate him. I don't know. He's, he's kind of a likable guy. But if you hate him and you want to go spend your money somewhere else, we got this other place. Go to statusfearmerch.com. Uh, another uh, sponsor of the show, friend of the show. He does all our artwork. He's a really nice guy. He does all the, the art for my band, except for the stuff that Corey's wife draws. Head over to statusfearmerch.com. Use the coupon code TERROR. Get you a little nice discount there. <laughs> Welcome to episode 112 of the Podcast of Terror, a production of the Galactic Network. I'm your host, Matt Stein. With me, as always, is Corey. Just Corey. (laughs) Just Corey. Just Corey. How are you, just Corey? I'm just fine. Oh, God. That's just good. (laughs) How have you been? We uh, we took uh, two weeks off. Impromptu vacation. Like we intended to take a week off, and then it just kind of stretched out. I think Matt and I both felt the the burn of the holidays just kind of wash over us, and we said, (laughs) "Ah, you know what? Getting up and and doing anything right now is probably the worst thing for me." Yeah, I really just wanted to not shower for three days and masturbate in my own sweat. Yeah, which, you know, is is also how I spend all my religious holidays. I, I have nothing to say to that. <laughs> it's, it's a happy Easter here around the, the Scott House. Oh. Um, no, I, our facility closes down during the week between Christmas and New Year's. Lucky. And, well... Usually I go in anyways. Me and a couple engineers normally go in uh, while the facility's closed. We, we're in there just doing regular work. I figure if there's people there, I should be there. But I can work remotely. Mm-hmm. And my wife just said, you know, you were encouraged to take the time off by the president of your company. Why don't you just take the goddamn time off? And when day nine rolled around, I was just, <laughs> wow, I have accomplished nothing. <laughs> This is amazing. Uh, I remember what it was like to be unemployed for about two years. Um, I could do that. You you could just just do nothing? Yeah, people always say, like, oh, I couldn't handle not doing anything throughout my day. I would just, I would go nuts. It's like, man, I don't go nuts. There is so much fucking TV and so little to give a shit about that I could do this forever. See, I always get the... I'm just, I'm a technology challenge away from Wally. I get the itch uh, to go outside. Like, nope. Even even if it's just a Saturday, I uh, yeah, I'll just get to a point where it's like I got I gotta fucking go. I gotta I gotta go do something. I got a window right above me I can open that lets air in and lets the screams out if I need somebody to come find my corpse. It, it just there's not a damn thing. Like it's 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 amazing. You can feel the the bed sores kind of build up and the rigor happening, and you just, <laughs> go, just lean into it. Oh, oh man, my cat. 
has has basically she doesn't know what to fucking do since I actually leave the house now. And she's all fucking neurotic and shit. She like sits on the bed and just looks for me. Yeah, there was uh my wife and I well, she took off the week between. I was supposed to do training from home, but shit broke, so I ended up working like Christmas Day and then all week. And like last Tuesday when we both finally went to work, like the dogs had no idea what was happening. Like they were very confused when they had to go into their their kennel so we could leave. They got yeah. over it. Yeah, they they'll, they'll they'll figure it out. Yeah, they're just but, dumb dogs. And I just get overwhelmed with the cat when I get home, anyways. But it was it was nice. But I I completely have to admit I I miss doing this. I miss seeing you. I miss talking to you. And and I miss Aww. talking. I miss talking to our our listeners, uh, which we assume are still out there. If iTunes wasn't fucking us, yep. Thanks, so, iTunes. Uh, yeah, it's fucking Apple. Well, like, well you know, don't, don't say that. Uh, Apple overlords, they're probably listening. Someone they're going to dispatch to your house. Well, they better not be listening on anything other than a brand new fucking iPhone because they'll slow that shit down so fast you won't be able to fucking hear it. I saw that there's like 26 uh, class action lawsuits, and I'm wondering if I'm going to get stuff in the mail because I've, I've, been, yeah, exactly. I've been eating the apples for a long time now. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't have a huge problem with what they're doing necessarily if it is to improve the quality of your older iphone but if you don't yeah. fucking tell people and that's a problem that's a problem with a lot of these companies it's just there's just no transparency to what they do and and i was talking about how lg is introducing a line of robots that are supposed to be replacing service workers in like fast food and stuff and and i said this is this is not surprising this is what all these companies are leaning towards, but yeah. there's not a lot that this country in particular does for jobs anymore. Like, what do we build our our infrastructure off of? So it, it it's it got kind of left to entertainment and services. And if we get rid of the services jobs, then nobody's going to be able to do anything. And I had this whole discussion with with some people at work, and they're like, "You don't have a really bleak outlook on life." I'm like, "Dude, I'm just looking five years ahead in the future." You know, unless we get a universal basic income for people, we're all just going to die and they're going to feed us to machines like in the Matrix. And, and that's that's fine. You know, I'm fat. I, I could I could power at least an iPad or two. It Go for it. I had a good run. Yeah. <laughs> it's always it always could be worse. I'll just make sure my cat gets to sleep on my uh, fatty acid that drips out. <sighs> yeah. Remarkable. Too far. For more on this podcast, including show notes, content information, subscription links, go to gncast.com slash pot. My face won't stop itching. Uh, you can chat with us <laughs> on our Slack channel during our shows at gncast.com slash sign up. And uh, there's a newsletter or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the GNCast stuff is is there. Yeah, or or you can just you can just come find us. We're around. You know how that works. Yeah, we tell I you mean, the end of the yeah, show. Was... Except that don't don't get a hold of me between eleven and eleven fifteen. That's Willie's time. Yeah, that that's what time? It's Willie time. It's a Simpsons. Oh, reference. that's Thanks. oh, I you just I thought you were talking about your Willie. You, you use the shinning. <laughs> Say the shining, then it's a class action lawsuit. <sighs> Who's gonna sue us? Who owns Who owns the shining now? Is, is that something that got bought by Disney? I don't know. But I mean, it's, it's kind of a kid's movie. We So two things here. I forgot to start YouTube, so we can't get the video taken down because it's not going to actually be on YouTube. And we know the guy who made the movie, so he won't bitch. He asked us to do the movie. <laughs> so this video will never get pulled down because of some copyright infringement that no one will actually tell us we what we did. E1. Yes. What are we reviewing? Volumes of Blood by PJ. Oh, Stokes. I thought we were doing the Lifetime Two Corys movie. Two Corys. <laughs> Oh, man. So I don't know why the two Cordys made me think of this, but yesterday I had some uh, Guinness macaroni and cheese bites from your Ooh. local grocer's freezer. They're really fucking good. Wish I, I had some more. I don't, I don't hear anything in that equation that sounds bad. I air fried them, too. The only thing but that yeah, sucked was cleaning it up. Cause it, there's I mean, is that cheese everywhere? Are you talking about you air fried them to make them or you air fried them to get them out of you? I air fried them to make them, and I coffeed to get them out of me. Oh, nice. Yep, the old coffee colonic. 
Oh, I see what my mistake was. Uh, we received an email I thought was asking us to review the two Corey's movie. What they're actually asking is for us to replace you with another version of me for this show. <laughs> so halfway through that, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. We got an email and I missed it. We, did, did you see the recent email we no. got? No. Okay. This fucking email right. broke for me again. It probably is. <sighs> I, will, I will forward it to you. It came about a week ago. Uh, you're usually on wait, top wait, of that. Who's stuff. it from? Uh, now I need to find out on my phone. Is it from Mike? We'll get back to it. I think so. Oh, yeah. I just, yeah, I saw that. I always respond to him separately, and then we start talking about oh. beer. So Mike is like the, the boyfriend of the, the girl who's supposed to be a virgin in the Monster Squad. He doesn't count. Is that what you're saying? Are you insinuating that I'm not cheating on you because Mike is, Mike's my side bitch? I mean, Mike is the one who asked for the two Corey podcast, but he's my sure. side hoe. I don't know. He, we, I, don't I don't know. know. I don't know. We always share beers and stuff, and by share beers, I send him pictures, and then he sends me pictures, and I owe him a box of beer. He keeps saying he's going to send me stuff. Mike, you don't have to send me anything. I, I'm just glad that you. You listen and you communicate. That's all I ever ask for. He's going to send is, you is, a box of dry cum. I mean, that's... I have so much already in the garage. So I don't know how this came up. Um, I was drinking. Shacker. Uh, I was down at Three Floyds with uh, my buddy Dan. Uh, Dan of the band Reaping Asmodea and his ex Are you a, Are you a 16-year-old cutter? You're a drinking Jaeger? Is that what you were doing? No, 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 no. Because that is someone who hates themselves way too much. No, no. I was having a fun time. Like, Dan's ex-girlfriend works there. Um, super, super nice girl. She's heading up their distillery. So we got to, like, drink whiskey straight out of the barrel, and it's, like, not even for sale yet. Oh, that's cool. So, like, we, we were there drinking beer because it's a brewery, and they're opening a distillery, so we got to try all this this booze because she was asking our input, and it was really fucking cool. And at some point, I equated jerking off into a, a Ziploc gallon baggie and it being Amish friendship bread. <laughs> I don't remember how I got to that point, but I remember talking about Amish friendship bread and a bag of semen. Uh, out here, there's something called senorita bread, which is just delightful. Uh, but now I'm going to have to assume that it's made out of female emissions. Senorita bread? Yes. Senorita bread? I yeah, it's, 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 it's I amazing. I get it, it around. It looks like Walmart makes it. I can't imagine how that's true, but maybe. Well, Senorita Bread, Google, takes me to Walmart bakeries. Hmm. Maybe they just... Like like many things, they they stole from other yeah, cultures. Yeah, I'm sure. Then they had it made in China and, and uh, flown in. But uh, it's it looks like breadsticks, except it's super pillowy and doughy and, and almost tastes kind of uncooked in the center. Mm-hmm. But that actually adds to how good it is. And then it's got a... It kind of. It looks like something you'd put your dick in. Over it. Oh man, I thought about it, but it's it's usually at the office, and they frown upon that. There, man. they said one more time, Corey, we can't have you putting your dick in the seniorita bread anymore. It's like I'm just turning them into crullers. You enjoy. Oh, mm, that's right, jelly filled. I think I've had this before. Oh, it's still warm. <laughs> Were we both quoting the same movie? Uh, fuck. What movie is that? Is that Van Wilder? Wilder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. We're right on top of the current <laughs> films. Uh, that's I haven't I haven't watched that movie in a while. I should change that forever. Hey, yeah. uh, what are you drinking? Before, before we could have had more. <laughs> I was, I, I, we were doing so good about the segue into it, and then we just broke away. Uh, other than than dog semen, I, I'm I'm drinking iced tea. Kind of iced tea. Lipton. Mm. Brand of champions. You're a Lipton boy. Or people who enjoy pencil shavings <laughs> filtered through hot water. Uh, what? <laughs> commonly, it is it is said that the standards for tea in tea bags, in, in pre-bag teas, are not high. Okay. And that there's there's a ton of stuff in there that may not exactly be tea, including something akin to pencil shavings. And uh, little small rocks, That's which fucking float weird. like a witch, which makes sense. Wow, it's tasty though. Yeah, or whatever. Um, I'm drinking 
a maple bacon coffee porter from Funky Buddha in Florida. That sounds wonderful. It's actually pretty fucking good. I was really scared, but uh, there isn't a ton of bacon happening. A lot of maple. We got a... I wasn't done talking. Waffle maker. I know, but I'm, I'm going to go with this anyway. <laughs> no, it's fine. Is it a blue waffle maker? No, don't, I don't think do so. Do not Google blue waffles, kids. <laughs> oh, God. Don't do it. I am going to say right now, because it was the point where my wife's ears perked up during the film last night, uh, one of the characters calls her boyfriend a dick waffle. Mm-hmm. And my wife just said, that is the funniest goddamn line in this movie. She's like, I appreciate this. Also, that girl is hot, um, which is why I love my wife. So we got a we bought a waffle maker for my mother in law for Christmas, and uh, I don't want to say the store, and I don't want to admit to the fact that I'm kind of a prick about this. I ordered it online, had my wife pick it up. She she got it, and there's this huge ass box in her car that she doesn't want to bring in, and I'm like, why aren't you bringing in the waffle maker so we can take care of this and wrap it up? And she's like, well, it's just too big said how big can it fucking be it's a waffle maker are they making them like on the flintstones and it's a brontosaurus thing about eight inches it's a living uh (laughs) no what they did by mistake in the holidays as you do is they gave us a case which contains two waffle makers instead of just giving us the one so now you have two waffle makers so my mother-in-law got her waffle maker and we got a Free off maker. Huh, fuck yeah. And normally, I am the person who would normally go and correct that mistake. I just didn't want to fucking deal with it. Now you can make all sorts of fucking waffles. So we, uh, we're we making waffles. And I made waffles. I did the Alton Brown waffle recipe with buttermilk and, and like big to do. And it was pretty good. And then you realize, god damn, I can only eat one waffle. Yep. Like I made two for each of us. It's too much. It's too much fucking food. So I have to break that shit down. But a we had we gone to a local place and I'm sure there's a bunch of them that have them. They have uh bacon cheddar waffles. Oh, and I feel like that is something that we're going to do next. We have been getting this, uh, maple brown sugar sausage oh. at the Safeway. Oh, and, and it is quite delicious. So I'm, I'm trying to think of like different things to incorporate into the waffles going forward. That's the fun of the waffle maker is yeah, you make waffles, but it's what kind and, and what else you do with it. I'm not going to make a fucking grilled cheese on it probably. Uh, but just everything can go in a waffle maker. Uh, neighborhood pets are going to wind up missing. <laughs> fucking, uh, the neighbor's <laughs> dogs in my waffle maker. <clears throat> yeah, I saw, but I just, and there was something I always wanted to do with Thanksgiving leftovers was make a uh, Thanksgiving sandwich. You take stuffing and you stuff it in a waffle maker and then that's your bread and then turkey and the whatever else. Um, another thing I saw to do was uh, take tater tots in the waffle maker and make like a Ooh. tater tater tot waffle. Oh, tater, I think we got tater, tater, tater tots too. Yeah, but the, the problem is, is like you have to let them thaw out and it's like has it's like a thing that you kind of have to like pr- plan out and. My wife can't you have to really think eat that shit, and I don't have any friends that like being weird and fat with me. So, I live a little too far away. Otherwise, I would definitely take you up on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Someday, someday soon, we'll plan I'm your, a meeting. I'm your codependent fat friend. <laughs> just, uh, Thanks, Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. I'm gonna go visit Corey, and I'm gonna take one pair of sweatpants and a jug of Crisco. Yeah, that's how we're gonna party. <laughs> one pair of sweatpants that are plastic lined and tie off at the bottom. Oh. That was a uh, Tim and Eric did that. And just had like shit pants, just shit in your oh. pants. <laughs> they named it shit pants because no. it wasn't obvious. <laughs> I wish it was. Um, let's see here, Tim and Eric Cinco products. Here we go. We just get a list of Cinco products. Um, they had a lot of ones in, involving poop. Good for them. They had balls insurance. You can insure your nutsack. D pants. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Here. Uh, yep. Yep. D pants are protective liners you wear under your trousers to capture and contain your uncontrollable diarrhea. They are for diarrhea only and not to be used for solid loafs. Once D pants have been soiled, they can be rinsed off with a hose and reused. A- any quality disposable diaper can be. Um. But you usually want to scrape that shit out because Wendy's makes chili every day, and it, it, this is a more economical version of that. Uh, 
I, like I had to enlighten a lot, friends. and then <laughs> yeah, I like chili too. You just ruined Wendy's chili for me. Well, <sighs> Wendy's chili don't they take the the leftover burger meat and yeah. and use it to make the chili? Yeah, which is I I enlightened somebody at work about that the other day and like what really? Where do you fucking think? Why would they have chili on the menu? At a burger place, if it wasn't for the fact we have a lot of excess meat and they they fresh, never frozen uh, stuff, we'll just throw in the fucking chili. Yeah, it's like it's all the genius. white rice that doesn't get used at Chinese food places becomes the fried rice the next day. Oh, I didn't know that. It's it's very economical and it makes oh, sense. Nice. If you run a restaurant, how do I reuse this? And how do the, I make this all work? the cats that aren't picked up at the end of the day turn into sweet and sour chicken the next day? I don't want to deny you that and because, sweet and sour chicken so it's, it's a, yeah it is it is what it is most quality chinese food places are in strip malls and in those strip malls you either find a pet store or a veterinary hospital and and that's how you know that you're going to get the best quality chinese food we should probably talk about this movie if anyone's even still listening to this we should <laughs> we should but we, uh, will so we? but will we i don't know it's volumes of blood the first volumes of blood from 2015 uh, we had PJ Starks on our show not too long ago, and I think we promised that we would watch this at that point, and then we we didn't. For well, a long time. We did. We just it just took longer to get there. Yeah. Than we well, we had guests and stuff, and this was the first opportunity we had where we when we have a guest, we like to let them choose the movie that we're going to do, and apparently all of our guests have uh, too good a taste to recommend this movie. Whoa! whoa I'm just whoa. teasing. He's not wrong. No. Uh, what, we want to start off by saying uh, PJ and uh, Jim Blanton of the Davies County Public Library in uh, Owensboro, Kentucky, developed the Unscripted Film School program so people from Owensboro could experience filmmaking for themselves. This is their first project. No, the first project was an eight minutes horror short. And the second one would be Volumes of Blood. And they used Kickstarter to raise over four thousand dollars for the film so this is an interesting project because it's not just someone making their essentially their first movie this is a movie for people who haven't made movies before and it's done in an anthology format as well so you go from story to story and there's the the overarching like surrounding story and then there's the the inner stories and the it's interesting how they do it Oh, yeah. I but I want to start out with saying there's a couple false starts in this, or they feel like false starts. And one of them I'm going to be kind of critical of uh, because my wife would not forgive me if I wasn't. Seems exactly like the opening to a well-known horror movie franchise. And and while it's it's not really anything that's that's damning to the film when we were watching it she said is this one of the urban legend movies because this is the opening for urban legend oh i was trying to figure out what movie you were getting at I yeah i have not seen that movie in a literal fortnight so. yeah it starts out with well it starts out with a movie within the movie um which is a classic 1989 horror film that they they made up for this, yeah, which is fine. And and it and you watching you like, oh, I know what this is already. And if you tune out, you're gonna miss where we go to next. Where we go to next is the person who's watching it is watching it on their phone in a class, and the class is about urban legends. And then that whole scene feels very evocative uh, of the urban legend film, which is now twenty years old I'm looking it up. and i don't know i don't know how how beloved or anything it was but it, they did spawn a few sequels in urban legends so it is 20 years this year wow yeah you're good but again if you stop at that point you're going to say oh well now i know what this is and you know fuck these people for for ripping off urban legend uh why not just rip off scream like everybody else did but it's not that either. It's just that that scene happens and you have to kind of recognize that that's what it's doing. But it, it becomes sort of the window dress for the rest of the movie, which is four kids in a library 
assumably the Owensboro Kentucky Library, uh, that are talking about how to create a current urban legend and get it out there. And so they each tell their individual stories that they're seemingly making up on the spot to to then spread around the campus or whatever they're at to create the new urban legend. And uh, the different stories are all directed by different people. Uh, most of them, I think, are written by uh, PJ, among others, but the directors are all different. And they go into different style things, but they all take place within this library. So in the spirit of independent filmmaking, a couple of things you have to keep in mind is one, you're going to see things that look similar in these different stories because it all takes place in the same location. Uh, you're going to see kind of similar moments of something's down the end of this line of books and I don't see it because I'm not looking at it, but the viewer can see that be it a ghost or a murder or a monster that gets reused a lot, but that's, one, it's very common to horror films to use that effect. And two, it looks the same because it, based off of what they're doing, it's all happening in the same place. But the stories are still very different from each other. And I think that's both good, but I also think it's not exactly what I feel like qualifies as an urban legend in most of those cases. When I think of urban legends, Obviously, there's the the ones of like the creature that's in your area, like Bigfoot or the the Jersey Devil or whatever. But most urban legends to me are stories of kind of a education to keep kids from misbehaving by saying things like, you know, oh, the the killer's inside the house. So you've got to always be aware of your surroundings and not leave the door or windows open to let people in uh, or, or or other things like that. The urban legends of razor blades in your apples if you're Halloween candy. Well, this actually happened, or the pop rocks and the soda stuff, like stuff that could happen in the real world. And this involved ghost stories and monster stories and summoning Satan stories. None of those, I feel, really qualify as urban legends, but I still enjoyed that there were various kinds of stories in this anthology, as opposed to everything feeling exactly the same because they had to use the same location. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, no, it totally made sense. That was just a very in-depth uh, little description there. I don't know. I, I it, This movie is not bad. I didn't think it was bad. It no, was, not at all. It was very um, independent. You know what I mean? Yep. So, uh, the, the, As a project, it's, it's really inspiring oh, yeah, because absolutely. of what it does. Uh, <clears throat> now, and the fact that, to, to kind of give a little clarity, this is the first volume but they've already had a second film come out and a third film is on the way yeah. in the Volumes of Blood series. So this kicked off a series of movies that, of course, progress with the the filmmakers getting more experience and stuff and getting, I would assume, probably more funding. Right. Now, the one thing we talked about this briefly before we started recording, it was like when it when I started, started to really enjoy it was when... They're sitting at the table, and like one guy's like, "Oh, you know." Basically, it said that uh, for a, a to get someone's attention, you have to kill them. And then the guy's like, "All right, that's what I'm gonna do." And he pulls out a knife, and it's all shitty looking. And then it turns in, <laughs> it takes this like weird comedic twist, which literally had me pissing my pants. I shouldn't say I didn't yeah. actually pee my pants, but I was fucking dying because well, a, you didn't pee your pants specifically because of the movie. Oh, I pee my pants because it's cool, right? And uh, but the point being is like. PJ was on not too long ago. Super sweet guy. Always been very, very nice. Um, so to see him like play this overzealous, egotistical director who's very full of himself is fucking hilarious. You know, the line where it, it's it like, you don't get to understand. be you don't get to be a regional gold star or whatever director. And the guy's like reading his little thing and it's like working with PJ is like you'll listen to about how he started holding a camera as a baby, and it's like that doesn't say that. And then my favorite line in the entire movie is when he goes, I'm going to go get some air because it smells like doo-doo in here. <laughs> or it's, it's, all, it's all stank up in here or something. Yeah. It's all stank. And then he throws down the fucking guns. Yeah. Just... Yeah. Uh, yeah um, 
it, to, it, to it gave the movie a little bit. Yeah, it gave the movie like a lot more personality than just trying to be another horror movie. Is what yeah. So, and 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 I, I want to say that's when that happened. Like we know what what our show is, but uh, people who come into the show who don't know it, uh, especially as guests, it's always kind of a, a crapshoot of are they gonna are they gonna be able to hang with us? Yeah. Not because we're cool and they've got to step up their game, mm-hmm. but because we're assholes and and they have to recognize, oh, these guys are assholes. I can I can step they, down to their level. I can need I can to, fall on this spike pit of their level. They need and, to lower and, their standards. Oh, so much, yeah. so much. And PJ came in and completely ran with us and 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 was a great guest. Uh, not just because of of what he does, but just because of who he is. So I was. I loved seeing this side of PJ because you're right. He is very sweet. He's a really nice guy, but I also like to see him playing dirty and, and what they did and the fact that he's playing himself in that part. He's not just playing random director. He's playing PJ. Yes. Yeah. Was even better. And, and I think everybody who was a part of making the movie got to play those parts as well. The, um, the person in charge of makeup and effects who he's just pissing on throughout the whole thing. She was all in on it. I loved that ending. Um, and it is a huge payoff for the the rest of the movie, which is in most ways a kind of straightforward horror anthology film. You you know what you're getting with something like this. So seeing it finish off like that and keep going and keep going and getting through all the, the credit stuff and everything, there's stuff that happens while the credits are rolling is all terrific. It it, it upped the game a lot and it showed you not only is it cool to see independent filmmakers making projects like this but then you just really root for them mm-hmm. after that like mm-hmm. that's that moment of like holy shit these people are great i want to hang out with them i want to be a part of something like this too because that just looks like so much fun um yeah if i if i had gotten a whole movie of of that this would have been an an epic level film for me because that was just Great. And and yes, it's over the top and, and yes, it's silly. And it's not something that we haven't necessarily seen before. But I think Matt and I both agree we weren't expecting it. No, not at all. And it really made me want to like see the second one and see yeah. what that's about and how how and if like they bring back that little type of comedy. Yeah. I I, I mean it, it certainly it certainly seems like something you can get away with easier mm-hmm. at a lower level. But then in Scream Three Wes Craven shows up, you know, with with Shannon Doherty and oh no, wait, Wes Craven doesn't show up in Scream 3. He shows up filming a Scream movie in Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. Yes. But Jay and Silent Bob show up in Scream 3, so it's kind of par for the course at that point. Um, I, I, I loved it. And I think actually in PJ's section of the movie, which was the one about the ghost, uh, there's a point where the librarian is putting away books, and one of the books he he picks up is Kevin Smith's View Askew book. Uh, and then he also ha- puts away books that one of them has PJ on the back cover as the writer, another one has uh, one of the other writers or directors on the back of it. And then in one of the other shorts they're doing where the girl's boyfriend comes in and tries to get her to drink and is just a complete over-the-top asshat too. Um, someone is reading a horror magazine that the cover was done for this, and it's all about the filmmakers like PJ and everybody else. I'm trying to remember, the name. I think it was Horror Hounds or something. And and there was little touches like that that I was just, this is great. Mm-hmm. You know, this is this is self serving, but it's really cool that again, if if this is your opportunity to make a movie, that you would insert these things there. And I thought that was all. As a fan of the person who was behind making this. I really enjoyed that even more. But if you're just someone who's watching it and you see this stuff, you kind of go, oh, what, who's that? What's going on here? And then you get to investigate it. And then you get to see the payoff at the end where you actually see these people show up in their own film. I love that. I thought that was terrific. Uh, let's let's go across the individual segments. So each person had their own story that they're telling. So the first guy who had the coolest fucking shirt ever in the orange candy corn shirt uh, that I, I kept admiring and, and felt bad when I saw I get cut and stabbed at later on. Uh, his was about an energy drink. 
which seemed the most creepy pasta of the stories. Remember when we did the yeah. creepy pasta oh, yeah. episodes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that seemed like that level to me, like the stuff that we've seen of of Rain Ackman, Ackman's online, like not as bad as the Sonic the Hedgehog creepy pasta thing that was just weird. Um, but a lot of creepy pasta is just fucking weird. It's fucking weird. Yeah. And but this this was somebody going around and and finding random people it's kind of like the people who come up to you in the mall and ask if you want to take a survey uh back when both malls and survey takers existed uh kids ask your parents hey a, 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 a guy goes into the library and sees a girl studying and says hey i i see you're you're struggling with this you got a lot of stress and everything why don't you try my company's energy drink and there's not a lot to that story no, it, it's it's no. more of seeing the effects on her and her acting it out. And she she did a good job and everything. But the story itself. Again, I don't know that I'd say qualifies. It's it's the most normal story out of everything, but I just don't know if it qualifies as an urban legend because of the fact that. Like, if anything like that actually happened, we're used to the world being this whole company would be exposed unless it's just. There never is actually a real company, and they're just doing it to kill people. I, I'm not sure exactly what. I guess that's it. It is the story is be careful of what you you drink and don't take drinks from strangers. Maybe it is the most <laughs> urban legend story. Now that I think about it. I take things from strangers all the time. Yeah, it's not going to end poorly for you. And energy drinks are just chock full of vitamins and minerals and things that do your body good. It's the modern day milk. Although milk is terrible for you, so don't drink that. Again, are you kids, saying that energy drinks parents. are good? No, I... Everything's man, terrible I, for you. Lipped in iced tea. You said it was pencil shavings and rocks. Yeah, but what's more American than pencil shavings? We expose kids to pencils Hot dogs. all day long. <laughs> that's, that's what we give them in school. We won't teach them how to use a condom in schools, but we'll give them a fucking number two right away. Number two is not a sexual connotation. I got nothing. So. People understand. Um, and that guy is is looked at as the one who has the least understanding or interest in what the class is about. So I guess in a context, it makes sense that his story is the most lacking in an overall story. Yeah. Yeah. It just kind of dramatic, is what it is. Dramatic pause. Uh, the second story, which was the one that was directed by PJ, uh, is the ghost story. What I liked about this one is that, for the most part, there's no dialogue to it. So it's all just a guy in the library being chased around by a ghost. Uh, a lot of the foreshadowing and like the, the ghost book that gets turned into him keeps dropping off the shelf. Now it is one of those moments of like, so this book keeps winding up in other places after I know I just put it back. Uh, should I just leave? Should I just get the fuck out of here? Like, should I leave it on the counter and and someone else can deal with it tomorrow? That's, that's how this shit works, right? Like I put all the other stuff away. There's one fucking book out. Okay, Mary, I get it. Write me up if you have to. Otherwise, fuck you. I wanted to live. Um... <laughs> Sorry, but it, I it's so funny to me. <laughs> <sighs> it was it was good, and I like a, a good moment is when a movie can call out its similarities to pre existing stuff. Uh, Scream again was very good about that, but that was the whole premise of Scream. Yeah. But when they finish it up, the guy accuses the girl who was telling the story of like insidious much. It's like, yeah, okay, it it's a little bit insidious paranormal activity, whatever. Um, but it was good. It, I think the the quality of the makeup on the witch was good. I think the whole thing finished out well. It it sort of could have been a dream, but it wasn't a, really a dream. Uh, the moments, like immediately when you see the guy's getting up to put the butts away and you see up above behind him, you see the witch kind of hanging out in the air yeah. behind the, the stuff. It's like, it's subtle. It's not trying to 
overpower you with the imagery, but it, it introduces it slowly. Uh, I think that is a sign of good filmmaking that I don't know that everybody would get right right off the bat. Now, I'm, I am complimenting friend of the show. Uh, so you can say that maybe I'm kissing ass a little bit to someone who just because they're friends. I don't fucking care. You say what you want to say, you know, but put it in writing, bitch. Wow. You can review the show at iTunes.com. So, oh, no. Um, <laughs> if you want to if you want to review our, iP- our, our iPod, oh, fuck this, our podcast, <laughs> you have to send 37 strands of hair to Apple and they have to make sure mm-hmm. that you're OK. And they have to be eight inches or longer and from the pubis. From the pubis. Ah, yeah, you really got to pluck out those long gray ones. I, every day of my life. Oh, God. Uh, so I just shave From my off. teeth. Oh. Never mind. Oh. Yeah. I'm like... Uh, third story. Sl- I'm slick like a seal from the neck down. <laughs> and that's why you want to get clubbed by penises. Um... I love the feeling of a big fat cock as it slaps me in the forehead. Story, do. story number three. Story number three. Uh, story number three was the girl who is, again, studying. A lot of people in the library, either as employees or studying for uh, test or finals, as you do. It makes sense. I really, really enjoy the name of this book when you get there. Uh... You didn't, apparently. I'm trying to remember it now. The Encyclopedia Satanica? No, that's on the fourth one. Is it? Yeah, the third one is Guys, the girl who's in there who is... She's studying, and her boyfriend comes in, and her boyfriend is just a loud, obnoxious asshole, and he brings in the Jack Daniels, and everyone keeps telling him to shut up, and then he starts humping the air with the Jack Daniels bottle, uh, which is, I assume, whiskey dick reference in some way. But that's the one where she calls him a dick waffle. Oh, and uh, oh, I was eating while well, I watched this. So I must have... <laughs> Were you eating dick waffles? I was I was eating air fried pork chops. Oh, nice! Yeah. A lot of air frying in your place. Ah, it's, it... it's fucking easy. I like air frying chicken tits too because it gets crispy gotta... on the outside but juicy on the inside. You don't want to overuse that air. Have you not seen Spaceballs? Oxygen is going to be in scarce supply at some point. I got a case of uh, pure air cans. And you keep them locked away in a vault I with do. the. Code <laughs> the code is one two three four four. Ah, <laughs> oh, we're right, right on it. Uh, we're timely. Um, so this is a weird one because it's a monster one, but it's the the twist is that there's not a monster. The guy comes in, his girlfriend, and he don't see each other too often. She throws a lot of jabs at him about living in his mother's basement. Familiar, and. Uh, then he just tries to get her to loosen up. His brother works at the library, is allowing her to stay after they close uh, so she can keep studying. And then he gives her a shot. He finally gets her to to allow herself to have one drink with him. Uh, he gives her a shot, and then he leaves. And then she gets really woozy and gets chased around by a monster. Turns out the shot was laced with a truck. I, I have very weird feelings about this movie. I know this came out in 2015, uh, which is just a scant three years ago now. But this whole scene is very weird. It's like, oh, my boyfriend drugged me uh, in a romantic way <laughs> and chased me around is, as a monster. <laughs> is there a romantic way to drug your wife? I'm asking for a friend. Uh, is your friend Bill Cosby? Yes, of course. What, what is, is not? What is the the answer to get my question answered without sounding? As long as you're slipping the, well, the I'm drugs slipping something to, in her. I mean, my into friend is a cup of Jello pudding. Then you're you're <laughs> just uh, pudding pop. Oh, um, yeah. So. So when you drop a cell phone, especially a smartphone, how does it automatically call <laughs> your voicemail and log in and play? <laughs> like I, I uh, you're reading a little too far into this. I am. I, I'm being. But I'm, I completely I'm agree. That makes no way. sense. PJ, we but want was, an answer. It was. It was to give context to what actually happened, you know, and and it could have been a note or something. 
but it was the the admission of this is why I drugged you and and this was all a ruse to to kind of get you to loosen up and and so I could spend some time with you spend time with you doped up and me and my brother decided to dope you up in unison and then I I chase you around the place and of course you get stabbed because as you do when you fucking terrify somebody you have to understand sharp objects are everywhere and someone's going to get stabbed Sounds in the right. face and or neck. It's usually when it gets you. Yeah. You you have to have your your second in this has to be the lookout for, oh, by the way, you're probably going to get murdered by your girlfriend. Let me be here as the just in case. Of like when she stabs you the first time, I step in and say, no more not stabbing for 20 minutes and then the lights come on. So so that was, that was a little, that was an educational moment, but it was also other than the, the final scene in the movie, I think it was just the most fun with the, the, the silliness of the dialogue and characters that were just kind of ripping into each other a little bit and the whole back and forth between them, Uh, maybe a little over the top, with the guy but it it was again if you were a kevin smith fan it felt akin to stuff that you would have seen in mall rats era kevin smith with uh banky and them yeah. just like being assholes to be assholes and i enjoyed that one i thought that was uh that was a good deal of fun and my wife thought the girl was hot <laughs> i don't disagree yeah she was cute um so the last one is the one with uh, the girl who worked in the library has recently had her boyfriend kill himself and she blames herself for it. And the guy's mother definitely blames her for it. And we don't know a lot of the details as to what happened, but she's working there late and finds a satanic book, which was called what? The Encyclopedia Satanica. Hmm. That's true. That is uh that is quality. I didn't hate it. I I I, I prefer Satanetics, uh, which was the L. Ron Hubbard <laughs> version of Oh L. Ron uh, L. Ron? Yeah, well, same thing. There's but a, uh side note, there's some documentary on A and E coming out about uh Waco. Oh yeah. Branch Davidian. Uh, didn't ABC just do something about Waco this last week? Uh, I don't know. I think theirs was more of a dramatization, but I may be wrong on that, but I thought that that was something that played this week. Witness to Waco? That's MSNBC from 2009. Never mind. Um, ABC presents all new documentary, Truth and Lies, Waco, on the 4th. Yeah, three days ago. It, it's good. You you watch the Waco special. You do a little barbecue. It's a, it's a fun way to spend an evening. Too soon, man. Too soon. Oh, it's always too soon. When I first moved to California, uh, I met this this person who uh, said that I look like David Koresh. I I, I can't see it, but and it it was it was many years ago. But uh, and my one of my best friends at the time uh, kept getting compared to Lorena Bobbitt. Oof. So. It's all very timely. I said, so we should do a barbecue with cocktail weenies. Um, That's okay. I don't hate that. So in this story, the uh, the girl and her boss are talking about what happens. They find the the satanic book. It it is if you want to talk to someone who's dead, you uh, request it and then you kiss the book. Like some weird little spell thing. And then her yeah, boyfriend uh, comes back and and is wearing a devil mask, but then he takes it off and looks like her boyfriend and everything after she wakes up from being passed out. And he kind of mentally tortures her for all the things she did wrong that led to his death and then chases her around to kill her. And this one is pretty good. Like overall, the the actor who does this and the and the actress in it, there was, I, I, there thought, was some, I thought the quality on this was 
some of the acting Go got ahead. a little cheesy at times towards the end when he was trying to a like, little bit. Yeah, but it, to, you know, it wasn't terrible. You know what I mean? No, I, I I actually thought it was it was it was a reasonably quality level of of acting and storytelling in this, and it also utilized more of the library. Uh, they went upstairs for the first time in this scene, so it made everything feel bigger. Um, and the final conclusion of it, of him calling the best friend that she had cheated on her boyfriend with over to meet her at the library and him using her voice. Again, not not a brand new style of story, but I thought overall it was it was a pretty good thing to end on as far as the anthology goes. The anthologies usually happen and you you hope that the stories get stronger as they go along or it preferably stay at a quality the same way the whole way through. I feel like that this story was the strongest of the four mm -hmm. I agree. to end on. Um, I do agree. And, and yeah, I, I, I expected him to call the mom for some reason, like having the mom being the one who placed the book out there and being the one to kind of instigate him getting called back. But then they they get away from that by, they kind of say that it's not really him, but she just summoned something evil up that has his look and it's to torture her and everything. But the implication of he killed himself so he is in hell, I liked all of that. I, I think that there was a lot in this that made sense to me and worked. And I don't know if it's my favorite of the four, even though I think it might be the best one of the four. Uh, I think my favorite might be the third one because I just, I loved the the acting in that one. Except for the end bit. So uh, we, I, we get to the... I just said it was a little uh, cheesy. It, you know, it's... Yeah. So I'm you know, I'm not saying that the acting at the end completely ruined the whole fucking segment for me. No, no, it's I just... mean it's my favorite of the the four stories except for the ending with PJ. And, oh, and all oh, of the people. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Because after I agree. After this we get to the the story of the four friends who are sitting in the library who are telling each other their proposed urban legends. And then we get to the the reveal of the guy who started the whole conversation in the first place, who's taking the Urban Legends class, um, says, but really, I invited you all here to cause a completely different Urban Legend, which is to kill all of you, and that gets everybody's attention. Yeah. And that's when we see the things break down, and it goes from, like, this very poorly done kill scene to... The director jumping up and saying, this is the shittiest fucking scene ever. What did you use? Ketchup? Uh, yes, in fact, I did use ketchup. <laughs> You're a fucking moron. The, the whole thing with the coffee and slapping it down. Like, everything I about that was just... A large. This looks like a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything about that was just so much fun. I agree. And um, if you watch the movie only for that... Worth like, it. I, I feel like it's worth such it. a great payoff. Um, The one thing... Fuck, I had a point. Oh, uh, so the guy saying like, yeah, I brought you all here to tell urban legend stories and really I'm just going to kill you. Like, that's not like an urban legend story. That's just you're getting your friends together to murder them. Yeah. It, the Conceptually, what kind of sense did it make exactly? It, they were like, well, the only way we can spread these things as urban legends is to get people's attention. And how do you get people's attention? Oh, by killing everybody who was going to tell the urban legends. Right, right. And that is that is a good question, though, is how would you start an urban legend and and i feel like if you got four people who seemingly are from at least somewhat different sects of of the social circles that all do have a common ground in this library thing but only two of them seem like they were actually really friends mm -hmm. if you have all of them kind of pushing out an urban legend to their different groups then you could kind of build on it because all it takes is for one person to tell a story and then for you to hear that same story from someone completely else who has no connection to that first person and you go, oh, that starts to build the truth to it in your mind. And th then that's what happens. Then it kind of builds up from there. And, oh, I always heard about it this way. Oh, I heard about it this way. So the the breakdown of communication can be like telling that, that old game telephone where you tell somebody with something in the air and it goes around the circle and it comes back and it's yeah, like completely yeah, different. Yeah. You can, you can say, Oh, well the details are wrong, but what really happened? Cause my cousin knows the guy that it happened to is this. And that's where it becomes like 
real to people. Mm -hmm. um, because if you look at most urban legends, the, the things that are the most believed are the things that are the most disproven. Um, but it doesn't matter at this point because it's in the, the mentality of the, the social zeitgeist. And I think everybody who has like a local urban legend enjoys that local one so much more that they don't want it to go away. And so if you do make it about something happening in the library, then everybody will have a focal point of that legend to then say, oh, well, it, it was here. And so they don't want to not believe it because it does add a bit of mystery and excitement into a place that would otherwise be mundane that is their place. You know, and people in California aren't going to hear about something that's happening in Kentucky and people in uh, Michigan aren't going to hear about it. But if it does kind of break out, it's easy for Californians to say, oh, well, that's probably bullshit. Mm -hmm. But if you're in Kentucky, it's like, no, this is our bullshit. You know, so you protect it. Uh, that's neither here nor there. But I, I, I do find the whole thing of creating an urban legend yourselves interesting like as the concept of what this movie could be about and while it's not really about that i like that and maybe that is where they go in with the next volumes but i i do know that they played a preview at the end of this for volumes of blood 2 and they have the killer that starts out the movie in the the faux 80s movie who actually goes in and kills everybody in the library at the end yeah. um go into a house and and kill which looks like the woman from the the opening scene again uh but she's a mother in that part and uh and then walks through and then you hear a kid calling out for mommy and that's where it stops so I, i'd be interested to see what volumes of blood the next one is like and if it's based off of that at all or or what but i gotta say i mean knowing pj was our our endpoint on this mm -hmm. But I, I just kind of overall enjoyed this movie even without that. Yeah, I, I definitely would have enjoyed it even if <clears throat> I didn't know PJ. But yeah, with all things is like, oh, you know the guy, then it makes it a little more enjoyable. It it really does. I I I can't I can't say that I wouldn't have found the end stuff funny had I not known who PJ was. But knowing PJ definitely upped the game for me. Right. So uh, okay. if, if you're a listener and you maybe came into this episode and didn't hear our episode with uh, PJ before, you can go check that out. It's it's on our YouTube page uh, or it's it's in your feed uh, if you want to find it. it. It's worth that uh, to to see and then kind of go, oh, and this guy made a movie and go check out his movie and then go, oh, this guy's fucking hilarious because mm -hmm. he is he actually is really funny. And I never saw that coming. Like I never saw that being a part of the movie coming yeah i don't think he dropped any hints to us when we no, talked to him about no, it. not at all when it when it was happening i sent him a message and i just let him know how funny i thought it was and he it expressed to me that it's always uh a, a part of the movie which he's concerned that people may or may not enjoy oh man but i could see how it, you know someone wants to see like a horror movie and then they get to that part and they are turned off by the whole thing but back to the urban legend series at the end of urban legends, we find out that um, the murder in the whole movie is, is her name Rebecca Gayhart? She was the Noxzema girl. Uh, <laughs> and, and at the end of urban legends two, which has pretty much nothing to do with the first urban legend, the, the killer gets taken into a institution and then his nurse turns out to be Re Rebecca Gayhart again. And, that is this moment of like tongue in cheek. Oh, ho, ho, we're fucking with you kind of thing. If you're going off of urban legend movies, that tongue in cheek stuff works for the audience. That's Because they still had more films that came out after that. It's very, 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 very true. So I, I, I can't see anybody who, who watches this movie and enjoys it and gets to the end and sees that and then it ruins it for them. Uh, for me, it, it, it upped my enjoyment completely. But if nothing else, it's just it's one more story in a movie that is a lot of separate stories, not even just the the segments, but the opening prequel scene, fake movie from 89 to the classroom scene, everything else. It's just like there's a lot of different things in this. And this is just one more thing that is a different edition. And you got to you get to pick which parts are your favorites and which part are your least favorites. Yeah. You want to rate it? 
Yeah, let's rate it. Okay. I'm lazy. We just moved to a zero to five scale. Corey. Yeah, I know. We don't have a guest. You have to go first. <sighs> if it hadn't been for that last scene, I probably would have landed in the middle. Um, because it is, you know, it it's we we rate kind of on a sliding scale for independent films. We rate on a sliding scale for things that we know are like their first movies or whatever. Mm-hmm. But when we got to that last scene, I I just laughed so much. I loved it so much uh, that I'm I'm gonna give it a four point five. Oh damn! Um, I just went three point five. I mean, it, it's a pretty. It's a very good attempt. It's a very good first movie for yeah. what ultimately became a series. Uh, it's a very good first movie and like a somewhat Cinderella story. Um, but then that end sequence with PJ just being a dick, I thought it was so fucking great. I pushed it up, but um, I would totally watch it again, given like the right crowd of people. Um, so yeah. it's not something that I never, ever want to watch again. I certainly want to watch the second one. I certainly want to see the third one. Um, PJ was kind enough to give us a screener for his movie 1031. So like seeing what he's done here has gotten me excited to see what else he's he's doing and, and keep up with his work. So there's there's that. Yeah, and because this is made up of a lot of different people, I'd be interested to see if any of them also went on to do other stuff. If they're involved in, in say, the the next volumes or in 1031 or if they're doing stuff on their own, how many of these people took this as their first step and followed up on it? I, I was looking up some of the actors and actresses, and some of them are are known for being, actually for being in other stuff before this, Um which I was a little surprised about, but it it makes a certain degree of sense. If you if you're doing independent horror movie, you get a couple of people who are not necessarily ringers, but know what they're doing. Right. Uh, if you can, and 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 if it's their interest, then they probably volunteer for stuff like this. Anyways, they look for opportunities to be in in other films uh, to keep getting their their faces out there. But I'd like to see if some of the the different segment uh, directors and stuff if they've done other stuff and and when you see the quality that's in this it's surprisingly good quality for what this film both costs and what this film was trying to do yes um and that that's a thing is like we've watched some independent films and even some like not independent films and the quality was not at this level that's very uh, true that's very true now it has the the benefit of like years of experience compared to something that was made in the 1980s, but yeah. I still think that it's it's a good sign for what these people have done to what they get to do after and and a reason to ch- go check. Very true. Uh, you can contact us by leaving us a voicemail at 805-328-3966. Email us at potagncast.com, or you can leave a message on our website. Uh, follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Podcast of Terror. You can subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or uh, any other podcatcher, and leave us feedback, please, because that tells us that people are still listening, because Apple took away the ability to actually see who's all listening. Thank you, Apple. Uh, subscription options and links can be found at gncast.com slash subscribe, and you can follow uh, the entire network on Facebook under the Galactic Network. We still have the Amazon page set up, amazon.podcastterror.com. Go to that link, shop like you normally would. Show gets cut. You get charged if, nothing. Yeah, and if you go to that link, amazon.podcastofterror.com, you can use that to rent or buy yes. this movie. Mm-hmm. It's very true. And, and hor- uh, Volumes of Blood 2, Horror Stories, is also up there. I'm guessing when the third one comes out, it'll be there. When 1031 comes out, I'm guessing it'll be there. But yeah. Yeah. Then I'll do it. Corey, where can people find you and that fat cock of yours? Uh, my fat cock is available uh, nowhere near a school. And Just also... 100 yards from children. <laughs> um, you, know, you know what? I don't, I don't really have anything. You can, you can find me on Facebook if you want to follow me on Facebook. But I'm, I'm as much a dick there as I'm here. So what I suggest is go to donutscomics.com and help support the comics that I help support by putting them onto websites. Uh, for Levi Krauss and and friends and associates, and if you're interested in looking at my wife drawing stuff that is probably closer to fat cock than I will ever be, it's true. Uh, a lot of <laughs> you can go to to arthag.com and uh, it will take you to her Instagram. You can look her up at hag underscore attack on Instagram. She's got a page where she sells prints and stuff, and she does commissions as well. She's always busy, 
but her stuff is great. She's she's trying to challenge herself with new things. So if you see what she's doing right now and you're like, maybe that's not 100% for me, you might be able to influence her to draw something that is closer to what you're interested in. And it might help her find her next interest. Micro penis drawings. Not where people can find you. Uh, yeah, micro yeah. penis drawings. Then that is closer to me. Yeah. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, untapped at Matt the Lifeguard. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about a movie called The Babysitter. It's on Netflix. Corey picked it. I've never heard of it. I, I've only heard of it, but I don't know much about it. So I thought, yeah, if we don't have a guest right now, which we don't, nope. we're going to gonna take a little me time. Mm-hmm. I'm going to net, Netflix and chill for ourselves. Okay, <laughs> for ourselves. Yeah. And, uh, it, because everybody has Netflix. Everybody and chills. Everybody Not does everybody it. Chills. We want to we want to put some stuff that's available to, to all of you and and talk about what the interesting interesting things that Netflix is putting out there. Um, maybe this is not the best choice. Maybe you have other choices that you think would be better choices. I know Gerald's Game is on there. Mm-hmm. Matt introduced me to another Stephen King movie that came out around the same time called 1922. Mm-hmm. That we could review those. If you have suggestions, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Podcast of Terror at gmail.com. I promise I won't forget that you sent an email. But yeah, that's going to do it for another episode of the Podcast of Terror. And uh, we'll likely actually be back next week. So we'll talk to you guys next week. Stay scary, everybody. Bye.